You have spent months of your life trying to help manage these supply chain problems that have had widespread effects across the economy. And I, I want to ask you about this new trucking plan that you're rolling out today. But first, if we can just set the stage for where we are now, the American Trucking Association secretary estimates about 80,000 truck drivers short right now. It's a shortage of 80,000 drivers. I just wonder if that's the same data you're seeing at labor and, and how bad this problem is. Yeah, it's the same data. And, and the issue of trucking um, obviously started long before the pandemic. So this issue is not just a supply chain issue. Uh, this issue is an industry issue. Uh, and when I became the Secretary of Labor, obviously supply chain uh, rose to the, the top of the pile uh, with with what was going on with the pandemic, you know, ships coming in, goods coming in from, from overseas uh, out in the port. Uh, we had situations in other countries where uh, factories were shut down, places were shut down in America. So obviously the, the issue of the pandemic magnified the situation, but as we started to look at the trucking issue, myself, Secretary Buttigieg and other departments, uh, we realized that there's a long-term problem here so we would need a, a, a better solution than simply, you know, putting a Band-Aid on a situation that really needs to be reorganized, <clears throat> excuse me, um, or, or, or I don't know if reorganize is the right word, but, but, you know, a different focus on it. I know one of the big challenges uh, that you tried to manage as well is this age requirement that goes back many years that you have to be 21 years old as a driver to cross state lines. The infrastructure law that the president just recently signed uh, creates a carve out here, does away with that rule, allowing 18, 19, 20 year olds to cross state lines as they're driving the truck. How long will it take for that to have an impact? Well, you know, what we're doing now is we put together a group of folks to talk about some of the different challenges that we have. That's one area, uh, one issue, uh, another issue. And, and plus what that means is recruiting and retaining people in the industry. Uh, if, if we're not letting you do that till later in life, a lot of times we'll lose a segment of people that might wanna be interested in trucking. Uh, we're also looking at wages and we're also looking at benefits and, and get a better paying jobs for folks. Uh, trucking for years in this country uh, has been uh, an industry where you can raise a family on. Uh, you can buy a house, you, you, can, you, can, you can live a good, good life. Uh, and over the last few years, that, that's kind of gone away. So we're going to be looking at the wages. Uh, we're going to be looking at apprenticeship programs and pre-apprentice programs. And how do we create a pathway into this industry? Uh, we're, work, we're going to be going, uh, looking at a whole different, uh, looking at veterans that are coming out of the service that already have CDLs and Class A and Class B licenses that are having a hard time finding jobs. We're looking at and, and working uh, with veterans coming out of the service, uh, making sure that, that we're moving forward. But I think really, just so people understand what, what, where we got my information, this isn't something one day that we just woke up and said, okay, let's put a plan together. Uh, I went out to the ports. And when I visited the ports in LA and Long Beach and South Carolina and Philadelphia, you know, I talked to people out there. I talked to the companies and I talked to the Teamsters and I talked to independent truck drivers and really finding out, getting to the root cause of the problem. And, 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 and after that, my folks here at the Department of Labor have spent a lot of time talking to those, those different industries as well and coming up with a comprehensive plan. So this really is about a solution, a long-term solution uh, to, to, to make sure that we have good strong, good, strong trucking industry and people working in that industry for, for, for not just during the supply chain uh, problems, that, complications, but for years to come. Sure, yeah. The, the issue of young people getting into the workforce is a major one. As you just mentioned, this is a workforce that's been aging out, uh, Secretary, right? Older drivers are retiring at a faster rate than young people are coming yeah. into the business. How can you incentivize young people to enter a, what's really a very challenging lifestyle? It's a difficult way to make a living, leaving home three, four weeks out of the year, in some cases spending a lot of time alone in the cab. Is, is this something that does come down to wages? Will this become a much more lucrative way to make a living? It comes down to wage, but it also comes down to training. And I think that, you know, anytime that, that you're thinking about uh, attracting people into an industry, that pre-apprentice program allows people the opportunity to get an understanding of what the industry really is. And, 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 and trucking shouldn't be a fallback um, job for people. Trucking should be an option that people might want to do. Uh, and, might, you know, and, and not all truckers drive long, long distances uh, across the country, although a lot of it is about long distance driving. Uh, people drive for... for, for for, for, for corporations and they drive for manufacturers and they drive for warehouses. So there's a lot of opportunities here in, in this area uh, to think about it. I mean, we, we can't lose our trucking industry in the United States of America. It, it's such an important piece uh, of our economy. It's such an important piece, not just of our supply chain, 
but moving goods goods around the country and product around the country. Secretary, I understand the trucking industry as a whole opposes uh, the vaccine requirement that's being held up right now, this, this OSHA rule that you and I have talked about before being challenged in the courts. Uh, they say that, you know, it, it shouldn't apply to them. Truckers are in their cabs all day. They spend most of their lives alone. And I wonder if you've considered creating a carve out, an, an exemption for truck drivers like we've seen in Canada so they don't have an extra thing to worry about here in the recruiting process. Have you thought about that? No, we haven't necessarily thought about it that way. Uh, if, if, if you read the ETS, the way it was written, um, when truckers are in their truck, um, you know, it's, let me just back up. So the ETS that, that we put forth was a vaccine or testing ETS, meaning that if you get vaccinated, uh, we're encouraging companies are encouraging people to get vaccinated, you get vaccinated, you're vaccinated. If you refuse to get vaccinated or, or there's other reasons why you don't want to get vaccinated, you're tested. And then if you're working in the workplace, you wear a mask when you're around people. Uh, again, in, in the trucking industry, uh, the requirement would be, uh, I believe would be, um, it's, it, there's a stay on it right now, so it's not moving forward. But if, if, we're, if we're successful in the court, uh, then when the truckers are in their, in, in their, in their trucks and they're by themselves, uh, they wouldn't, they, you wouldn't have to wear a mask. It, it is a testing requirement. Uh, lots of employers in this country uh, like what we did with ETS. Uh, and, and again, it's about what we want to do here with ETS really long-term is to make people feel safe to go back into the workplace. Uh, one of the issues of people not going to work is, is the fact that they're concerned about this, their health. Now, how does that impact truckers? In some ways, it doesn't impact truckers. Truckers, are a lot of times, are in their cab. But when they, when they pull into a factory or they pull into a store, uh, they get out of the cab, they throw the mask on. If they're not vaccinated, I mean, again, I think that what it is, it's about a protection, not just for the people around them, but for themselves as well, because they have no idea what, what other people, if they're vaccinated or not vaccinated, if they're being tested frequently, uh, just to keep them safe. But if you hear from these young people who you're trying to recruit or even owner operators at this point who say, no, I'd rather not drive a truck if that's the case. And I realize this has become a very complicated political issue. Does that not complicate your effort to attract new drivers? Listen, I don't I, 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 I love the question. I don't think that a young person is going to say I'm not taking the I'm not taking this job. Uh, because I have to get vaccinated or te or tested every week. I mean, listen, pe people need to need to get to work in, in our country, meaning they have to work for themselves to, to be able to support their, themselves and their families. Um, this issue of, of of vaccines, I'm hoping it's not a long term issue in our country. Uh, we're, we're, we're dealing with it today uh, because we're living in a pandemic. Uh, we have a, a new variant that's come out now. We're still watching this very closely. Um, so I think it, it's it's not about it's the time we're living in. Uh, what the plan, what we're doing here with the trucking industry is long term. Uh, you know, it's going to be hopefully we will be able to support an industry uh, and build back the numbers in that industry. So that industry can continue to, to, to deliver products all across our country and, so, and support their families. Uh, and I'm hoping that, you know, 10 years from now, we're not having conversations about the coronavirus um, because, I mean, again, we just need to continue to move forward one step at a time. But we also, in the in the meantime, we have to deal with the virus. I mean, this has been a very, very complicated, difficult, almost 20 months now here in the United States of America and the world. Uh, we just topped the 800,000 number of deaths in the United States of America uh, due to COVID. Uh, so this is a serious, serious pandemic. Uh, we're living in, in, in once in a generation, quite honestly, times. Uh, we, 100 years ago, we dealt with a pandemic before. So uh, I, I think if, if, if somebody said they're not going to take the become a truck driver because of of a vaccine or, or testing, that's very short sighted on their part. 